what is up guys this is Troy D from the Troy D 24 7 mall channel your source for on point and no hype reviews we are back again everybody we're back with another fragrance review right here guys and man it has been pretty much a week guys it's been a week since i made a video because as a lot of you guys know i was in singapore for about a week guys now while i was there i did make sure to pick up a fragrance that right now we are going to review i wore it pretty much all the time when i was there and i'm sure because it is a new fragrance a lot of y'all are pretty curious about it, so let's get it. Now, before I continue, please do not forget to like and subscribe, guys. Liking, subscribing, and watching the ads is a great big deal to this channel. Guys, we just hit 17,000 subscribers yesterday, guys. So I do want to thank y'all for 17,000. Thank you for all the love and support. And don't worry, guys, this is going to go on until we're 20K and beyond. I will make sure to make you guys the best no-hype videos that anyone has ever seen on YouTube. And the fragrance that we will be talking about today is none other than Le Labo's latest Shanghai City exclusive. This is none other than Mer 55. Yes, Mer 55. And if you're watching my community tab, I bought this in Singapore, guys. And this is the official sample right here, guys. This stuff is exciting, guys. Every single year from August to September is when Le Labo releases the city exclusives to the world guys so if you have access to a Labo boutique you can pretty much try and test every single city exclusive out there and then you can purchase it as well guys so for this year it's a labo mer 55 shanghai city exclusive and gosh what can i say guys mer mer is a really interesting ingredient okay this one mer used to be like a healing elixir back in the day guys but in perfumery it is an ingredient that adds sophistication it adds depth and especially when mixed with frankincense I mean that is really the combo that we always get in perfumery now myrrh though as a main ingredient as a spotlight ingredient for a city exclusive I mean that was a little bit interesting for me guys I mean myrrh is definitely not in my top list of possible you know Le Labo fantasy exclusives guys I mean there's a lot out there but the thing about Le Labo really is that they're able to make some pretty stellar combinations out of these you know ingredients like myrrh or gayak that you know we really would not think would be amazing and that's because guys when it comes to city exclusives just because it says myrrh doesn't mean that you know you're gonna get loads and loads of myrrh on its own guys and matter of fact when Le Labo released Citron, that got me hyped up, but then the actual product was underwhelming, guys, okay? So I was pretty excited about this myrrh. I'm ready to tell you guys what I got on this fragrance. Let's spray this thing right now. I'm only gonna go with two because this is pretty strong. Just a heads up. Mm. Okay guys, now let's talk about Le Labo's city exclusive for this year, Mer 55 guys. Starting with the top notes part of this fragrance. This fragrance starts off with a beautiful combination of myrrh and musk and then it is counterbalanced by a solar jasmine note. Okay, so again, that's myrrh and musk together and then it is countered by a very strong jasmine note right here. This one, guys, like I said before I sprayed this, is pretty powerful. The first time I tried this, I did six sprays. Nowadays, I do six to give every fragrance a fair shake, and that was very, very powerful. So make sure to limit it to maybe two or three to get a nice lingering sillage out of this thing right here. But definitely, guys, this includes myrrh. And myrrh definitely has a sweet anise-like smell, kind of like licorice and sweetness together. That's your myrrh right there. And then you have musk to really add a nice sensual gradient to this fragrance. Now, again, the jasmine is going to be the counter note because normally when it's myrrh and musk, it already is a gradient. Usually it's kind of like a straight to a fade to black, straight to the dry down type of scenario right here. But this is just the opening, guys. So there's definitely some depth, definitely some sensuality here with the myrrh and musk together. But of course you have that solar jasmine. Again, a very strong, prominent jasmine note 
that comes out here and livens things up. It definitely balances it, definitely makes this applicable even in the daytime. Now, what is my first impression of Le Labo Mer 55? Definitely a this fragrance got my attention. It definitely got my attention, guys, because this fragrance is different, okay? And as a perfume reviewer who reviews perfumes on a regular basis, guys, I do get a lot of similarities across the spectrum. And to be honest, I mean, that kind of bores me. And so I'm always looking for something that's gonna strike my chord and really become an exclamation point and be different, guys. And I would say that this fragrance definitely is one of them. And also, the fact that this was not weak, the fact that this was a very potent fragrance, and I know brands like Le Labo, Byredo, Diptyque, always, you know, there's a lot of haters saying, oh, their fragrances are really not that strong. Well, this one is not one of those. I mean, very, very impactful and strong again you probably just need three sprays plus the actual depth the actual beautiful combination that sensual gradient that depth right there countered by a really nice high quality jasmine note really really got my attention and I thought initially that maybe this fragrance could be femme because there's some jasmine into it but because the gradient gets stronger as the fragrance goes along, I realized that this was not really just a, a femme-leaning fragrance, that it's actually very unisex because it becomes a lot more balanced as it goes along. The gradient becomes stronger. There are gonna be a lot of other notes here that are gonna kind of tilt it right in the middle right here. This fragrance will definitely appeal to those collectors that are into artsy or artistic fragrances that maybe define or you know give you a definitive picture of a location or you know time in the past because definitely this does have some ancient china vibes think about the wooden pagodas and the temples and the mountains and the river with a white lotus you know think about that and this fragrance captures it beautifully just on the intro right here it's not gonna appeal to i would say those that are looking for practicality and immediate use some straight shooters in the perfume game you're probably not gonna find it in this fragrance but definitely in terms of depth and sophistication this fragrance definitely has it and again take note this is not a weakling scent okay now moving into the mid of mer 55 guys so i would say an hour into this fragrance is when the jasmine starts blending in so the jasmine is a powerful counter note up until an hour when it starts really blending in this myrrh musk combination guys it kind of like blends into it still sweet still lovely but then you already know that the gradient starts intensifying into this mid and that myrrh and musk combination eventually becomes a woody musk combination so that's exactly what i was saying how the barometer you know, the meter kind of like went from, oh man, I was thinking about femme, but then it eventually became kind of unisex because it's now a woody musk combination here in the mid, guys. Now, the counter note right here in the mid is going to be patchouli. So patchouli takes in the reins from the jasmine as the spike, the exclamation point, the counter note. Kind of provides a spicy feel actually, guys, when mixed with this woody musk combination. And again, very, very unisex right here. Again, very lovely, has a lot of depth. Again, it will, you know, give you feels of that, you know, Shanghai China or just China, kind of like uh, the ancient China with the wooden pagodas, like I said. But again, the gradient though with a spike of patchouli, kind of like a modern twist right here. So I definitely like this. This stage right here does extend up to four hours. And so it's an enjoyable woody musk mid with the spike of patchouli. Okay guys, now let's head into the dry down of Mer 55 right here. Now, if you guys saw the breakdown, the note breakdown of this fragrance prior to watching this video, I'm sure you guys saw the Oud, okay? So Oud is in the dry down of Mer 55. And I'm sure a lot of you are like, ooh, that's Oud. And I'm sure Troy will try to make sense out of this. I will definitely, guys. So the great thing 
about Mer 55, this fragrance right here, is that there are no notes left alone in the spotlight. This fragrance is a fragrance of combinations. Remember that, guys, okay? Because when you look at this, you're probably thinking like, oh, I don't know, myrrh on its own. I mean, myrrh's not really that great of a note anyways, and on its own, it's kind of, ah, you know? And you're not really gonna get that here. The myrrh, as I've said in the beginning, is in conjunction with a gradient of musk, with the jasmine floral pretty much counterbalancing it and keeping it light. Now, here in the dry down, it's pretty much the same as well. So oud is not like a spotlight note, but it is a prominent note that is mixed with musk. And because it is a sweet oud, it is a sweet oud here, a sweet earthy oud in the ending of Mer 55, it definitely picks up from the patchouli in the mid and continues the sweetness all the way till the end because this fragrance started off with sweetness with the myrrh and the musk and so it must end with sweetness and musk as well but of course it does definitely get the woody and sweet and earthy properties from the prior stages of this fragrance. So this is not a fecal barnyard animalic oud whatsoever, but a sweet earthy oud that has some really, really great continuum from the mid right here. Continues on with the strength, continues on with the gradient, some modernity mixed with links to the past. I think it's a stellar ending to this fragrance, Mer 55. At least it gives you a very nice continuum, no surprises whatsoever, and again, it is very different in terms of the total overall composition. Okay, now here's the big question, okay? Troy, is this fragrance buy worthy? Okay, given the expensive price of the city exclusives, should we buy this fragrance, okay? First and foremost, this is definitely not blind buy worthy. This is a fragrance that you should test first, like I said, and even if you test it once, uh, not on a strip, I would get like a sample. I think that by the fourth or fifth time, you'll get to really appreciate and love this fragrance. Now to me, this is definitely buy worthy. I would definitely keep this if I had more. And that is because of my love of musk, because I love musk in a fragrance and musk does appear in this fragrance pretty much every time from start to finish and it's always comboed with something else like myrrh or patchouli or oud and the combo is quite nice there's a nice flow to this fragrance definitely some uniformity from start to finish and again it definitely adds depth and sophistication this is a fragrance that i would use in a classy venue and i was in singapore and i thought about the crazy rich Asians scenario, you know, smelling like a very rich person in Singapore, I would say this fragrance will definitely do that. And again, it's not going to be, uh, you know, the type of fragrance that maybe guys who are into simpler things like Bergamot 22, you might not get into this fragrance right here. Now, is this worth the 100 ml, you know, the big bottle. In my opinion, I would rather get the pocket-sized, like, travel bottle of this fragrance. I do have the Traveler pocket-sized one for Mousse de Chen, and even if that is my favorite Le Labo City exclusive, especially for right now, I mean, I have yet to finish it, guys. I have yet to finish it. So I would say, if you want to make the most out of it, and maybe if you like another city exclusive, getting that little travel sized one, I think 15 ml or 10 ml, I'm not sure, I think is more than enough. And it will leave you some room to buy the other ones as well, guys, okay? But definitely, I think that this one is great on its own, and I do love the performance, okay? This is not a weakling, definitely strong from start to finish, and the total performance of this is about nine to 10 hours hours guys okay not really that crazy but at the same time this one is powerful it's consistent it's not really weak and so you will get some really really nice coverage off of this and especially as it goes into a gradient a spicy woody oody uh, sweet gradient I think you'll like that part right there guys especially for uh, daytime to evening time transitions again super classy kind of modern but kind of has ancient China into it. It's a lovely fragrance, guys, and I definitely implore you guys to try it. And that is it. That is my review of Le Labo's latest city exclusive from uh, for Shanghai, China. 
this is Mer 55. Let me know in the comments below what y'all think if you've already tried it. This is now available in every Le Labo boutique for you to try or buy. You can even buy the sample right here, guys, okay? So let me know in the comments below if you have tried this fragrance. And I know this is like a new like background right here and that's because we're moving around, okay? So I'm moving a lot of my stuff around in the house and so that old background right there, it's kind of gone. So we're using this right here. So until then, guys, I wanna thank you guys for 17K. I have a lot more videos for y'all stacked up. So I hope you guys are excited. Do not forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next video. God bless. Take care. Peace.